is temporary. It may last for a minute or an hour or a day or even a year. But eventually it will subside and something else will take its place. If I quit, however, it will last forever. The thought, and I look at you and I say, you have greatness within you. You have the ability to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. No one could have convinced me that I would be doing what I'm doing right now. You know, the easiest thing I do every year is to go into a sales organization and dramatically increase their sales or go into a prison and, and enable prisoners to see themselves differently and teach them the methods and techniques of how to plug into the system or motivate young people to begin to, to see how they can have a vision of themselves in the future and fit. That's the easiest thing I do, to, or train a speaker to help them to leverage their experience as a speaker and say, look, speaking is a projection of who you are, not who you think you ought to be, and come with power from a platform. That's the easiest thing I've ever done. Let me share with you the most difficult thing I've ever done. The most difficult thing I've ever done was to believe that I can do what I'm now doing. Some slaves said, I don't care what we go through, we're going to survive this. 400 years of slavery, we're going to get through this. And you can't get through it. 1825? You can't get through a writing class and you got tutor after tutor, resource after resource. The problem is, you ain't never felt no pain before. You're soft. It's a soft generation. You quit on everything. Our people did not quit. Harriet Tubman not only made it, she went back and got some more. No one could have convinced me, just given my circumstances, I earn millions of dollars every year. No one could have convinced me. If the, both my parents came up here right now, I, I would not know either one. No one could have convinced me, being labeled educable, mentally retarded, born in a abandoned building of Florida, in Liberty City, poor section of Miami, Florida, failing twice in school, no college training, never worked for a major corporation. I did not know. I can do what I'm doing right now. We work on differentiated products. It's one of the reasons we take a long-term viewpoint on things. You can't really do the right thing for customers if you're short-term oriented. And if you're going to invent new things, you've also got to be able, this goes along with long-term orientation, you've got to be willing to endure a lot of criticism. You know, if you're going to put, Kindle is a good example, if you're going to put your back into reinventing a 500-year-old industry, some folks are going to get ornery. For this, like there are many more ways to fail than to succeed. So you, I mean, you have to explore. I mean, particularly like for a rocket, there's like a thousand ways to think and fail, and like one way it can work. So uh, you could you could have a lot of rocket failures to explore all the ways in which you could fail. Um, so, but, but I do think that one great thing about Silicon Valley is that failure is not a not a big stigma. So it's like if you if you try hard and it doesn't work out. Uh, that's okay. Like you can um, learn from that and you know, do another company, and it's not a big deal. Because right? everybody's worried. They just, every employee has read the Amazon.toast article. Every mother of every employee has read the Amazon.toast article and <laughs> has father, called and said, "Your father, and mother, live are you in New York? Yeah, are you okay?" Yeah. And so we had an all-hands meeting, and I said, "Look, um, you should wake up." worried, terrified every morning. But don't be worried about our competitors because they're never going to send us any money anyway. Let's be worried about our customers and stay heads down focused. It's all about how you approach you know, being a professional. And that's both on and off the floor. How you show up to work, how you walk, how you move, how you prepare. And it's not about all about just talking about it, it's how you be about it as well. Uh, and, and leadership, it's not a, you don't get to pick two or three days out of the week where you want to be a leader or you say, I want to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. No, it's, it's an everyday thing, both uh, on the court and off the court. So you know, I try to lead by example. I lead by my voice as well. But I put the work in. And uh, I think when my guys see how much I put the work in, and they, they allow me to lead them. And, and I respect them for that. And, and I'm humbled by that as well. They can succeed fabulously, and it won't stop us from succeeding. Well, you know, whatever you do in life, you know, be it, you know, you know interviews, radio, rap, or whatever, people are gonna judge you. See, you can't see the picture when you're in the frame. I remember Mike saying, Les, you can do this. Mike, huh? 
Mike, how, man? Wait a minute, Mike. Uh, how much? How much am I going to be able to to to, to charge, Mike? Less. Um, you, you, well, you could start out at a thousand dollars an hour. Oh, th- Mike, I don't make that working for two weeks. Come on, Mike. I, Mike, uh, man, I, I appreciate your belief in me, Mike. Look, Mike, I work for the Miami Sanitation Department, man. I've I've been a garbage collector. Uh, uh, you know, I've, you know, I've, I've done door-to-door sales. That, that was great, and. You know, I, I'm here as a disc jockey. That's good, Mike, but Mike, I, I don't think I can do that less. You can. But Mike, I don't have any credentials. I've never I've never written any book, anything. Man, I'm, I'm not rich. How can I teach somebody to do something I've never done? But Les, why don't you just test yourself? Why don't you stretch, Les? Come on, man. Mike, I... I don't know. And here's something I, I realized. Write this out. Sometimes you have to believe in somebody's belief in you until your belief kicks in. I'm telling you as I leave, I was homeless for two and a half years. And the problem with most of you, you never felt no pain before. Y'all spoiled. Y'all spoiled. Some of y'all spoiled. Just bottom line. Your parents have done everything for you. You never had to do nothing for yourself. You're spoiled. We're going to keep it real tonight. Some of you are spoiled brats. Every time you ever got in trouble, somebody in your house got you out of it. Every time you've done something you're not supposed to do, people say, Eric, your mother's a tyrant. You're right. She kicked me out. You're right. She's mean, but she developed a man because she put me out there and said, you're going to have to grow up. And some of you have never learned to grow up. And so every time something get hard, you quit, you call mama. I dare you to take a little pain. I dare you. I dare you not to go home. Somebody said, I don't go home, I feel bad. Go, go through it. You ain't going to die. At the end of pain is success. You're not going to die because you're feeling a little pain. We uh we decided, you know, I mean, why, why do all this work, put all this work in and then just give all this money to these major companies when we could do it ourselves? Well, we need is distribution, and we're working on that now. We're going to find a way around that distribution. I'm telling you as I leave, I was homeless for two and a half years. And the problem with most of you, you never felt no pain before. Y'all spoiled. Y'all spoiled. Some of y'all spoiled. Just bottom line. Your parents have done everything for you. You never had to do nothing for yourself. You're spoiled. We're going to keep it real tonight. Some of you are spoiled brats. Every time you ever got in trouble, somebody in your house got you out of it. Every time you've done something you're not supposed to do, people say, Eric, your mother's a tyrant. You're right. She kicked me out. You're right. She's mean, but she developed a man because she put me out there and said, you're going to have to grow up. And some of you have never learned to grow up. And so every time something get hard, you quit, you call mama. I dare you to take a little pain. I dare you. I dare you not to go home. Somebody said, I don't go home. I feel bad. Go go through it. You ain't going to die. At the end of pain is success. You're not going to die because you're feeling a little pain. I'm not eating like I eat at home. That's why you're about to go through the next level. Because if you keep eating like you ate at home, you'll keep being a boy or a girl. It's time to become man, woman. So don't, don't worry about a little pain. My greatest asset is I was homeless. So I can't feel a whole lot of pain. I've already been alone. There's not a whole lot of, it's not, not a whole lot of hurt I can feel on a little paper on a little test. So I leave you, I leave you, listen to me. We have gotten to a point where it's midterms and we're moving forward. The days of you getting money, I'm not saying we quitting, but I'm saying the day has got to go from external to internal. You have to give it everything you got. No more TV, no more parties, no more plan. If you don't have a 4.0, what you need to be doing is studying. Get off the phone. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm not available until the end of this year. Over the next decade, as we continue to start really discovering as a human race, mental health and happiness, that we are on the pre-dawns of people changing what success looks like.